and I'm the mayor of Northfield. Thank you so much for being here today. It's a pleasure to be here with you and I really appreciate all the support that you have given to this really important project for our community. It's such a pleasure to be standing here alongside all of you who made this project possible. All of your hard work, commitment and investment to this project and to this community. Increasing housing availability is a strategic goal for the city, and it's important for the long-term health of our community. And not only having more houses, but having affordable houses, because in Northfield, everyone should be welcome. This project was a challenge. We all know that, right? And it took a true community effort. We started in 2017. We had to overcome many obstacles. We had a couple of failed funding requests before we got low-income housing tax credits. We had to deal with a global pandemic, supply chain issues, and raising costs. And through it all, we persisted. To deal with some of these barriers, barriers the Northfield Housing and Redevelopment Authority contributed 4.5 acres of land and a forgivable loan for just over $500,000. The Northfield City Council approved tax increment financing for $689,000. I want to give a special shout out to the City's Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Those of you that are here and serving on that board, could you just give a little wave here, please? Can we give them a round of applause? and our Community Development Department, especially Janine Atchison, our former housing coordinator, and Melissa Hansen, our current housing coordinator. Could you give them a round of applause, please? <clears throat> for advocating for policies, we all did. We advocated for policies, programs, and projects to make Northfield more affordable, more stable, and safer, and for leading with expertise and empathy. All of those individuals that we just recognized there did that on behalf of our community. I'm grateful we have city staff and people in other agencies working together to make Northfield a better, more welcoming community for all. This is really a great accomplishment, an amazing accomplishment. These are beautiful homes that many families will enjoy for long into the future. Thank you so much to all of you for your hard work and for being here today. Thank you. I think I got this. Ooh. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jane Bartho. Um, the president of the Northfield Area Chamber of Commerce. And although the chamber did not come up with this idea, nor did the chamber do the planning of this idea, nor the building of this idea, nor the financing of this idea, we brought the big scissors. <laughs> and we know what a celebration the big scissors mean. But seriously, I could not be more honored to watch this project in its long time coming as it became a reality. Today marks a significant milestone in our community as we gather for this ribbon cutting ceremony of the Spring Creek Two townhomes, an incredible addition to the vibrancy and affordability of Northfield. Nestled beside the energetic soccer fields, Spring Creek Two townhomes represents not only a commitment to providing quality housing but also a dedication to a foster, fostering a thriving and inclusive community. 
Kudos to Three Rivers Community Development Team, the Northfield Housing and Redevelopment Authority, the City of Northfield, as it executed this plan thoroughly and capably to its completion. Today, as we cut the ribbon, we not only celebrate a new housing option, but we're also a shared community, shared commitment of affordability, inclusivity, and Spring Creek townhomes too represents a place where families can grow, dreams can flourish, a brighter future is built one home at a time. Thank you very much. That's great. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Jenny Larson. I'm the executive director of Three Rivers Community Action. Uh, I know many of you, uh, but for those who don't know me uh, and don't know Three Rivers, we are a nonprofit uh, community organization. And a large part of what we do is partner with local communities to identify and then to address the needs in our communities. So at Three Rivers, housing is a big part of our work. Um, and this is uh, the, our newest project. We've done almost a thousand units of housing across Southern Minnesota. Uh, Northfield is a key partner uh, for us and with us. Uh, and we're really proud today. This is my favorite time of the year uh, when we can welcome everybody to see a project that we've all worked so hard on for so many years. Um, as a community-based nonprofit, Three Rivers always has to work with you and with our communities. Uh, and so I'm so thrilled and so proud to have been part of this project for a long time. These projects aren't, aren't easy to do. Um, and they really do take a lot of partnership and a lot of work. So uh, I'm really, we, we can't say enough about our partners at the city um, and at the county, the huge partners. Um, if we didn't have city and county participation, it would make it very difficult to get the rest of the financing that we needed from our very important state partners too. Um, and so we're really, uh, Leah's gonna talk about them in a minute, all of the other partnerships, but I just wanna thank you myself for your work and your partnership and your friendship uh, in getting this project done. Um, I'm gonna give a shout out to our, to our housing team because I know they're not gonna take any credit, but they should get a lot of credit for this. Uh, Chris Flood is in the back. Chris Flood is our project manager. <laughs> He's got a Three Rivers vest on, you can't miss him. Um, but Chris Flood, uh, start to finish, has been uh, the person making sure that this project was going to happen. Uh, did all the groundwork and has been here every step of the way to make sure that, that we're here today um, and housing families in our community. So thank you to Chris. Um, and then I'm going to pass it over to Leah Hall, uh, who is the other engine behind the project. Leah Hall is our community development director and also has been very involved in working with all of you and our community partners uh, to make sure that today happens. So I just wanna thank, thank our staff. Um, we also have one of our board members, Galen Malika is here. He's also county commissioner. Um, and so he plays kind of a dual role, but wanna thank Galen. And I didn't see any of our other board members here, but if they're here, we have a 15 member volunteer board of directors who really um, have, they believe in housing and they believe in community, and that's why we at our organization are able to be here. So I really appreciate the support of our board of directors as well. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Leah Hall, who's gonna tell you more about the project and then introduce some of our, our partners who are gonna say a few words, so. Thanks, Jenny. Great, thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, thrilled is really an understatement, as you've heard, uh, this has been quite the journey and it's just what a fantastic day. So glad you're here. Um, so we're celebrating um, the opening of 32 uh, new high quality affordable housing units. Um, these homes uh, will be homes to 26 families and two and three bedroom units, 16 of which will have project based section eight. So these families will only pay 30% of their income in rent. We'll also be home to four families that have experienced the trauma of homelessness and four households with developmental disability challenges. This project was only made possible by many, many funding partners, local leadership, uh, many of which will be speaking here um, in a moment. Um, but I also wanna thank uh, the rest of our project team. Uh, Blumenthal's Architecture is here. Yay, thank you, hi Jim. 
Uh, we have Weiss Builders is here as well, our general contractor. And then also Lloyd Management. There's a lot of Lloyd Management here, our property <laughs> management firm. So they also have set this lovely table up and gotten our units ready for you. So now I'd like to turn it over to our funding uh, partners and project partners. First to speak is Brent Nystrom, um, the chair of the Northfield HRA, which provided the land donation and local funds to ensure the project could move forward and was really part of the early planning of this whole thing. So, Good afternoon. Like Leah said, I'm Brent Nystrom and chair of the Housing and Redevelopment Authority of the HRA. I'm also delighted to be here today uh, at this grand opening of the Spring Creek 2 townhomes. It has been a long and winding path to get to this moment, um, but I read an article many years ago that stated to truly build uh, affordable housing in communities, especially smaller ones, uh, it would take creative thinking and collaboration. In this case, I would also amend that statement uh, to include needing perseverance and determination. <laughs> Uh, this project has needed all of those things to get to the finish line, and I think it's a testament to the overall overarching coordination of Three Rivers Community Action and their staff that this project is now a reality. I think we all recognize that the managing of many, many partners, many partners uh, that we've talked about and are listed in your program, that's a significant task, um, but they, they did it. and. I put a little smiley face on my nose there, so uh, congratulations on that. If I put on my HRA thinking cap, uh, it's a little bit hard for me to remember all the steps and twists and turns that this project took. Um, as the mayor said and others have stated, I think it started in 2017. Uh, that's about the time I joined the HRA, and six years ago is a long time to remember back, honestly, for me. Uh, what I do know is Leah and Jenny and Chris, I think all probably visited our meetings uh, many times. And part of that time during Zoom, when we had to do Zoom things in the pandemic, um, and provided us the latest updates of, of what was happening. Uh, I do know that the HRA saw a tremendous value in this project uh, with its very affordable rents. And we knew this model could work, right? Spring Creek One is right over here, and that was a very successful partnership that, that we had with Three Rivers. Um, I also know that the pande pandemic wreaked more havoc on this project than um, we could expect, and, and it's already hard, and when you throw that in there, and it became really, really difficult. Um, I also do remember thinking I wasn't sure if it would ever get done. You probably thought that too. Um, but here we are today at the finish line and with much collaboration, much time and effort, lots of creative thinking, and probably more determination than I even know about, um, we're here. So congratulations to all that were involved in a project that brought so many to the table, fits so nicely in the overall uh, housing plans of the city and with the HRA. So. Congratulations. And I'd just like to do a, a shout out to another local funder. You heard this um, in the mayor's opening comments, but uh, we have Galen here in Joy. Um, the Rice County um, County Commissioners and the HRA uh, really helped us pr help by providing some really critical funds to close some of these funding gaps you heard about. Um, at the last minute, really came through and helped us pull this off. Uh, they also are the ones providing us with a project based Section 8 for the families. Uh, and now I'd like to introduce Sandy Gerdes. Um, She's from the Laura Baker Services Association. She really helped Three Rivers understand the need uh, for more local housing solutions um, for folks with developmental disability challenges. And so, um, so Sandy um, and Three Rivers has been on a very long journey together that you'll hear about now. Uh, so Laura Baker Services Association is an agency that's been around for 126 years, supporting people with intellectual and developmental disabilities to live the lives that they choose. And we are delighted to be here today. Um, when communities come together, magic happens, and I think you can see the magic. Um, and for um, some of the folks that we support, that magic is in process for two families. We have one person that's moved in and one person that's in the process of getting approved to move in, and so we're delighted um, by that piece that we can actually see um, people being impacted by the housing that has been created. 
as we can see from the people assembled, this project took and will continue to need a village. Um, LBSA's part in this project started as a dream for home ownership for people that we support and a different group of partners. We are ecstatic that a small part of that dream has come true here at Spring Creek too, and we're delighted that we were able to partner with Chris and, and Leah in particular at Three Rivers to navigate some of the many challenges that are provided by the developmental disability world in terms of how many people can live together and um, how funding works and some of those kind of things. So we have four units for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, people and families are housed and they're able to access support and to connect to the community in an integrated way. So um, it took the, the partnership of all of these people to make that happen and it creates access for our community. And so we appreciate deeply all of the partners that have been part of this. This progress is the beginning of new opportunities for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families. We will continue to work toward home ownership for people with IDD and look forward to continuing to partner with the community to do so. So thank you to Three Rivers, Leah and Chris again for navigating the many obstacles. Thank you to all the funding partners who made this uh, come together, Minnesota Housing, Rice County, the City of Northfield and the Northfield HRA. Together we can and together we will, thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. I'd also like to uh, give a shout out to Rice County Social Services. Mark is here. Uh, they are providing um, housing support to support our supportive housing units. Um, and they are also uh, serving folks with IDD in the community. Um, next, um, can I call you Mitch? Please do. All right. I got Mitch <laughs> Merksbauer from South Central Human Relations Center. Uh, which is the support service provider for the four families that have experienced the trauma of homelessness. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome today. I am so excited to stand up here and represent South Central Human Relations Center in partnership with this project. We will be providing the service coordination, tenancy support, and basic living support uh, for four of the families who will be living here that have previously experienced homelessness. And as we all leave here tonight and go home to the comforts of our home and all that that means, I hope that you have just a little bit different appreciation for that tonight. One of the things that we see with homeless families is that not only does it affect where they physically are gonna live and stay that night, maybe in a car, maybe on somebody's couch or in somebody's basement, or maybe in a homeless shelter, but what we don't always think about is the effects that that continues to have on the rest of the family. It's really hard to concentrate in your third grade class when you don't know where you're gonna sleep that night. And it's really hard to join the high school cross country team when you don't know if you're gonna be able to train with your team because you might have to go pick up your siblings and you might have to hang out in a park for five hours before mom gets off of the second shift and you guys can figure out where you're going that night. And it's really hard to get a job after school when you don't know if you're going to be in the same school next month. So creating these housing opportunities for homeless families has generational impacts, has gener generational impacts on what their opportunities are going to be. Are they going to be an athlete? Are they going to go into post-secondary education? What kind of job are they going to be able to get? So by providing some place where they know that they can lay their head every night, we're affecting future generations as well. We are so proud to be able to be the support services for the four families that are living here. This has been a long project. The staff that originally started on this project have moved on to other adventures from South Central. So that says a lot because people tend to stay at South Central for decades at a time. So those of us who are moving into this now and have just been part of the project for the last three or four years, we, we really get to be the cherry on top and really get to see now the fruitions of all of their hard work and all of their efforts. Not only are we able to do this with these four families here, but this project has opened up the door for us to be able to provide housing support for other homeless families in Rice County. So we're starting here and we're be, we will be able to, because of this project, help support other homeless families throughout Rice County. 
Thank you for this opportunity. We look forward to continuing to work with all of you into the future. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now I'd like to welcome John Arago from Greater Minnesota Housing Fund and the Minnesota uh, Equity Fund, who's our investor partner and a tax credit syndicator, and also after this project, problem solver extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Leah. Uh, so I'm, I'm John Arrigo. I'm the Director of Equity Investing with Greater Minnesota Housing Fund. Uh, we stood right about in this spot 13 months ago to celebrate the closing of financing and the start of construction of Spring Creek 2, which will bring 32 units of needed affordable housing for Northfield's workforce. That was an important milestone to celebrate the penultimate chapter in a very long story. That, uh, but today is the main event, the culmination of several years of blood, sweat, and tears, the last chapter of that very long story. Today we celebrate that Northfield's working families now have a new, beautiful, affordable place to call home. I'm here today representing GMHF, which provided the pre-development financing to help get this project off the ground, and Minnesota Equity Fund and its strategic partner, Sinair, which invested over $5 million of equity in this project. But this event isn't about GMHF or Minnesota Equity Fund. It's about all of you, the many partners who made this project happen. And when I say made, I mean made it happen. Uh, we're standing on here on this beautiful fall day and with so much optimism because of what has been accomplished. Uh, and you might be tempted to think that we got to this point easily, uh, smooth as silk and totally as planned, but sadly, as all of you know, that will be totally wrong. The reason we're standing here today is the tenacity, the energy, and the sheer will of Three Rivers, the city of Northfield, the Northfield HRA, the Rice County HRA, and countless other partners to overcome a seemingly never-ending barrage of bad news all outside of anybody's control right up to the last minute, right up, right up to when we closed and started construction. It was like that movie Groundhog Day, where we were just reliving the same story over and over again, and we hardly were making any progress. Um, Three Rivers, the city, and the HRAs persevered, and now we're here celebrating the big scissors. This work is critical to the well-being of working families in Northfield and in Minnesota. Minnesota statewide has a terrible shortage of, of housing of all types and especially affordable housing. We know that stable, affordable housing is the key to good outcomes, health outcomes, better educational, K through 12 educational achievement as was being talked about a minute ago, job stability and economic development. This project is a small step in the right direction and Three Rivers is one of GMHF's most valuable partners. Many thanks to Jennifer and Leah and Chris for all, the, for all the work you've done. I especially want to recognize Leah, who is sort of doing the ultimate mic drop here. She's, she's here today for this grand opening, and then she's moving to North Dakota. Um, <laughs> um, I want to thank the city and the HRAs and Minnesota Housing Finance Agency for their leadership on affordable housing and sticking with it even when things were going south. I've, I've said that every deal worth doing dies at least a few times before it happens, and by that measure, Spring Creek 2 is the most important project we've ever done. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you, John. <laughs> thank you. Um, and last but absolutely not least, we have Rachel Robinson um, from Minnesota Housing Finance Agency that really selected this project uh, for tax credits, uh, awarded us deferred loans, uh, first mortgage, and a construction loan that really pushed this project into reality. So welcome. Hey, everyone. I'm Rachel Robinson. I'm the Deputy Commissioner at Minnesota Housing. And um, this is so exciting. And really, my role is to say thank you, to say congratulations and welcome. There is nothing like coming to a family affordable property on a beautiful day right in front of the school bus like I did today, seeing the families who are at the corners, the kids who'd scattered on their bikes from school, um, and to come through this community knowing that more neighbors are going to be welcomed home here uh, in the next few weeks to come. 
and for many decades uh, into the future. It is so important to do this work and we hear it, we've heard it, we've all been behind the scenes where we do the money stuff, uh, hearing about how difficult this particular development has been to get to this point and none of you gave up. None of you gave up advocating for more resources at the Capitol or on this development and the possibilities of having family apartments that work for families, that fit in the neighborhood, that fit in the community. And it means so much to me, to Commissioner Jennifer Ho, to the governor and lieutenant governor, that you're out here doing this work. And we're gonna keep pushing for more resources at the Capitol because our state legislature believes in your work. They love seeing it. They love to see families and they love to see those kids get off the school bus and come home where they will live permanently. It means so, so much. We cannot say thank you enough. So congratulations, it's a wonderful day. Let's cut that ribbon and have a lot of fun. Uh, eat all these cookies and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.